Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. So today we are going to talk about former President Donald J. Trump in New York and the DA and what happened up there and how I'm having to rethink something because I've, I've had a position since all of this started and I'm starting to think I, I might be wrong about that <laughs> um, because the former president cannot get out of his own way. Since all of this started, I've, I've been pretty clear about the fact, you know, that anytime somebody asks, you know, when is Trump going to prison? I've always been very cautious and saying, you know, I don't, I don't know that he's going to. You know, he's a former president. Even if he is found guilty of some of this stuff, I think they'd probably make special accommodations and maybe put him on home confinement or something like that. I'm starting to rethink that. So if you don't know, the DA up there in New York received a letter, a threat, and it was accompanied by white powder. Now, this is after the former president called for protests. The former president, even though it was probably said after the letter was mailed, warned of possible death and destruction if he's indicted. This is the type of thing that a prosecutor might use in an attempt to justify detention. Take it out of the Trump scenario for a second and, and put this same behavior into a different context. Picture, pick a country that the U.S. has a long-standing bias against. You're probably imagining a country in the Middle East. Imagine a prominent figure in that country calling for action in New York and then a letter like that showing up. If there is a connection to be made, the U.S would probably hold that person who made that call to action in some way responsible. That's how it would be viewed. The latitude the former president receives is in, is in large part due to his expected behavior. You know, I, I've talked about it when we were talking about the search. And I was like, you know, I'm pretty sure if he had said nothing, there'd have been nothing. You know, if he had just let that go, probably wouldn't have turned into a big deal. And then we found out that there were FBI agents that didn't want to pursue it. And it certainly seemed to be the case, but when he started tweeting about it, and it, it just creates a situation where DOJ is kind of forced to act. His tweets may end up being something that a prosecutor uses as, as their grounds to request that the former president actually be detained in a cell. Um, now, I'm sure a lot of people are going to have opinions about that. I'm sure there are going to be people who are going to say he should go there anyway, and some people saying, well, no, he didn't really do it, or whatever, and that's fine. That's an argument that y'all can have. But that doesn't stop the, the fact that a prosecutor may attempt to use it for that purpose. And public opinion is one thing. The legal system is another. And it is probably in the former president's best interest to get off social media. Um, the... The letter and powder as reported, that's a huge deal. That's a huge deal. Um, and if, if it is somehow tied to the former president, like the person who sent it says, oh, I did it because of this, it, it's going to be very, very hard <laughs> to overcome any potential argument saying, hey, the former president actually needs to be detained. Um, it's a wild scenario. It's one I did not see coming, to be honest. Um, 
I honestly expected his lawyers to do a little bit of a better job telling him to be quiet. The statements he's making, calling the DA an animal, um, th- there's a whole bunch of them that, that may end up having an exhibit uh, and a letter assigned to him. The, uh, I, I may have to rethink the likelihood of him actually ending up in real confinement rather than just being at home and not being allowed to leave because a lot of the things that are currently happening, they're, they're changing the math on that. Anyway, it's just a thought. Y'all have a good day.